Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the General Insurance Corporation of India Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Binay Sada from Ernst & Young. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks, Vivian. Good afternoon to all the participants on the call and thanks for joining this Q4 FY 2022 earnings call for General Insurance Corporation. Please note that we have mailed out the press release to everyone and you can also see the results on our website and as well as it has been uploaded on the stock exchanges. In case if you have not received the same, please write to us and we will be happy to send the same over to you. Before we proceed with the call, let me remind you that the discussion may contain forward-looking statements which may involve known or unknown risks, uncertainties and other factors. It must be viewed in conjunction with our businesses that could cause future result performance or achievement to differ significantly from what is expressed or implied by such forward-looking statements. To take us through the results of this quarter and answer our queries, we have with us the management of GIC represented by Mr. Devi Srivastava, Chairman and Managing Director and top members of the management. We'll be starting the call with a brief overview of the quarter one past and then we'll begin with the Q&A session. With that said, I'll now hand over the call to Mr. Devi Srivastava. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sardar. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am pleased to announce the financial performance for the quarter and full year ended March 31st, 2022. We are pleased to have turned profitable when it comes to underwriting performance during the quarter on the back of our ongoing focus on reducing claims ratio and bringing down the combined ratio. We continue to be selective with the sole focus on underwriting profitability. Let me now take you through some of the key highlights of the financial performance. The gross premium income of the company was Rs. 10,303 crores for Q4 FY22 as compared to Rs. 8,812 crores for the Q4 FY21. The investment income stood at Rs. 2,826 crores for Q4 FY22 as compared to Rs. 2,286 crores in Q4 FY21. Incurred claims ratio decreased to 50% in Q4 FY22 as compared to 82% in Q4 FY21. Combined ratio in Q4 FY22 decreased to 74.3% versus 103.47% for Q4 FY21. The adjusted combined ratio, by taking into consideration the policyholder's investment income, works out to 93.11% for FY22 as compared to 95.85% in FY21. The company recorded profit before tax of Rs. 3,614 crores in Q4 FY22 as against profit before tax of Rs. 2,045 crores in Q4 FY21 and profit after tax of Rs. 1,795 crores in Q4 FY22 as against profit after tax of 1,260 crores in Q4 FY21. Solvency ratio stood at 1.96 as on 31-3-2022 as compared to 1.74 as on 31-3-2021. Net worth of the company without fair value change account, stood at Rs. 24,439 crores as on 31-3-2022 as against 22,452 crores as on 31-3-2021. Net worth of the company, including fair value change account, stood at Rs. 55,657 crores on 31-3-2022 as against 49,643 crores as on 31-3-2021. On the premium breakup, domestic premium for full year FY22 is Rs. 28,018 crores and the international is Rs. 15,189 crores. The percentage split is domestic 65% and international 35%. So, 
There is a degrowth in the domestic premium by around 7%, while the international book has decreased by 11%. We expect the positive momentum in terms of performance to continue, along with sustained improvement in underwriting performance. Having given the highlights now, we will open the floor for questions from the interested parties. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Participants who wish to ask a question may kindly press star 1 on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Kindly press star 1 to ask a question. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question from the line of Anirudh Agarwal from AAA Investments. Kindly proceed. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first, I had a couple of questions on the Q4 numbers. So could you explain this 1500 odd crores adjustment that we made in other income? I understand it's a mark to market in the equity portfolio, but could you give us some more color on this? Uh, yes, sure, Mr. Agarwal. I will request our CFO, ma'am, Mrs. Jeshi Ranadi, to uh, explain it to you in great detail. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Agarwal. Uh, this is uh, an, a provision which we have uh, made in this year relating to equity investment. All those equity shares which we were holding for more than three years, and we find that these uh, investments which we are holding at a book value of X particular amount, is not showing any increase in the price, but consistently at every year end, the price has gone down for these investments. We have made a provision in the books of accounts. This amount is approximately 1,508 crores, which we have taken, a, uh, taken it into the p account this year. Uh, is it... Uh, yeah, so ma'am, that's like a one-time hit that we have taken, right? I'm uh, this is one time. The first time we can say going forward in every quarter, there will be an adjustment to this provision. Something like uh, reserve for doubtful debt. This provision will keep on increasing marginally or decreasing marginally with a change in the quantum of it where we evaluate all those equities which we hold for more than three years and the price movement for the three consecutive balance sheet date, three years consecutive, next consecutive balance sheet date. So this 1500 crores ma'am is the difference between the book value or the price at which we bought and the current market price, right? Approximately. Exactly. This amount we used to record it under our fair value change account till the last quarter, uh, 31st December right. also, we made this adjustment in our fair value change account. So investments which we declare is always at market value uh, so this is this is a kind of a depreciation which we were evaluate we, which we were recording under fair value now we have taken it into the profit and loss account got it and come going forward i mean my sense would be that this would not be anything major going ahead right just whatever up and down to correct. the extent that the market prices change correct that will be a marginal change up and yeah. down and then accordingly, it will change. Supposing something goes up, then it will go out of this, uh, you know, ambit of this particular provision. Something goes down or uh, additionally uh, required to provide right. for, will be provided. Right. Understood. Okay, second question, ma'am, was on the commission adjustment of 1240 crores. So could you explain that as well? Uh, yes. Uh, this commission is on account of our one of the... Uh, ART, which we call it a structured solution arrangement. Now in this structured solution arrangement, uh, we create a, a, an account ca called fair funds with their experience account, which means the amount actually pertains to the reinsurer. A premium has to be given to the reinsurer, of which a particular percentage is set aside into this funds with their experience account. So once the contract gets over, and the profitability of that entire contract is ascertained. 
whatever has to be removed from that funds with their experience account some kitty is accumulated into that account from there whatever has to be removed in the form of outstanding losses or any other uh, deductions is removed the balance amount is taken or given back by the reinsurer to the seeding company that is gic as profit commission uh, the concept i think is clear so this right. commission came back to gic after concurrence from all the reinsurers on the structured solution uh, completion of the contract so this so is there is a one off gain of 1240 crores you are seeing in this quarter correct correct this is one of the gains yeah okay this so this will not recur going ahead so net in the underwriting profit 1200 crores is a one off is, is that the right way to think about it yes it is underwriting loss this year uh, but yes you are right uh, one of the uh, count uh, amount is 1241 crores which is reduced from the commission outgo next commission in whatever we are showing uh, is including this income of 1241 crores correct ma'am so it is basically a profit for us right if the commission outgo has reduced yes you are right you are right okay and so and ma'am why are the employee expenses higher in q4 materially versus you know the previous quarter any one off over here ah uh, mr rawal this is largely for uh, we expecting a wage revision so we have provided a small amount for that but the expenses as you would see are pretty minimal when you compare us to any any other reinsurer right no my sense is is this run rate now the new run rate that we should consider or how do you look at it for next year so what uh, the new what mr gavan is this is the employee expenses that we have incurred in q4 going to be the new run rate going ahead no no we see this is because the wage revision is due and then when you have a wage revision typically you also end up paying some arrears for the previous uh, earlier 5 years right so this is that what is the qu- uh, quantum of the arrears if you can tell us i think it's about 73 or 74 crores around that so we'll take it a, a ballpark 75 75 crores okay yeah got it right uh i mean operator if there are no further questions in the queue i'll continue i'll tell come back in the queue for my follow up questions the circle wall you can continue yeah okay uh, the next question sir was on the combined ratio i mean i appreciate that we've been taking a lot of steps over the past few quarters to you know get this in control but the international book is obviously not been supportive so why are we still you know targeting that 60 40 in terms of domestic international when domestic ex covid seems to have you know come below 100% on a combined ratio basis uh see mr agarwal one of the basic tenets of reinsurance is spread and right. you write only one territory for example india now in india as you know we have a right of first refusal by that logic we can write pretty much 100% of the indian market why is it that we are not doing the indian market 100% for the same reason that you ha- as a reinsurer you have to have spread if you don't have spread then your portfolio becomes extremely volatile mm. and a reinsurer is not worth his salt if his portfolio is volatile that's why you in- you want to spread your business across the globe as much as possible today we are dealing with over 160 countries now that is not a bad bet when you consider a total number of 195 what countries that's a good bet so we want to continue our dominance in the indian market that's why we have a long term strategy of 50 50 but it's also important to have an equal amount of spread so that we have losses from one area being offset by the premium from the other so that is something that is you know typical of the trade of reinsurer you if you take that away you make it volatile that's what you end up with no i understand that tenet sir but the point is that international fire is a portfolio that we really been struggling with for a long time right i mean i've been following jic for the last 4 5 years and since i can remember we've been struggling with this portfolio so is there something that structurally needs to be changed does the pricing materially need to go up for us to make money how are you thinking about that see mr agrawal if you also notice over a longer period of time of let's say two decades or so this is the first time that the market has hardened 
the reinsurance market has hardened for the simple reason that there have been so many catastrophic losses that capacity has shrunk. Hmm. So there have been losses, but now we are getting much better rates for the same amount of risk that we assume on our books, which is a good bet. So this hard market condition is expected to continue for a couple of years at least because of capital having been trapped in these losses. Therefore, the capital is now not available. It's a typical demand supply uh, curve that's operating. Because of that, right. it's a good time to be in the foreign book. In any case, you uh, having paid losses, you really won't want to come out at a time when you're in a position to recoup them. So, so how much price hardening have we seen in the April renewals? For the international books separately and domestic separately? International renews largely on the 1st of January. Uh, mm -hmm. Domestic is the one that uh, renews on the 1st of April. So there have been uh, price corrections in both. I request Mr. Hitesh Joshi, who looks after our reinsurance portfolio, to step in here, please. Uh, pricing trends tend to be geography-based and class-based, but uh, we can probably put uh, the hardening in uh, high single digit and low uh, double digit something like say 5 to 15 percent. Of course, there are exceptions where there are say loss making accounts where the price loading can be much higher. But that is where we would like to pack the hardening of the price. With this, you are saying for domestic or international? No, oh, I'm talking about the international. That international. first January. So weighted average for our portfolio so would be close to 10 percent. Is that, is that fair? Yes, that could be a correct uh, conclusion. Okay, and domestic, sir? Domestic, uh, as far as fire is concerned, uh, um, maybe you can put uh, at um, mid single digit, maybe something like 5%. But we did a uh, price correction in other classes like say, marine, motor, and liability. That okay. is where we did a quite a bit of a price correction. It will depend on individual account as to how much price correction was appropriate. Uh, so it would average would be how much? Average could be easily around 10%. Okay, 10% from I mean, There is a difference between say proportional and non-proportional. I am essentially talking yeah. about non-proportional. Correct. Proportional is a, again altogether a different thing. Understood. So with all of this, so what, what do we expect the combined ratio going forward to be? I mean, I understand too many moving parts and variables, but still, what what was our sense of FY23 combined ratio? Uh, see, Mr. Agrawal, for a reinsurer, the trends are more indicated than anything else. Now, if right. you see our trend, we have been trying to make it a much healthier portfolio than before. And that trend line is very evident to us now, which is an indication that we are on the right path. So uh, to give a number possibly is an impossibility. You can't. You really can't predict it. Yeah. But yes, going with the trend, we should be doing much better in 23 than what we did in 22. Understood. And we have, do we have any exposure in Russia, Ukraine, or you know, uh, the parts of Europe that are suffering right now? Any expected losses over there? Uh, yes. Uh, see, exposure is definitely there because they are territories that we do right. But Ukraine, mm -hmm. the exposures are not much. So Ukraine, I think the total is less than a million dollars of premium. Okay. Similarly, if you look at Russia also, the total uh, from Russia was around $15 million. But after the erosion there, it's now mm -hmm. closer to $10, $10 $11 million. So they are a small part of our uh, entire operation. Got it. So, and in Q1 till now, in the first two months, any major losses that we've seen in terms of NASDAQs or otherwise? No, no, Mr. Arwal, we haven't. We haven't. I mean, only what I can think of right now is that Nepal crash, where we have a small 10% share, but that's uh, small. Yeah. That's very small. But no, as far as the cat uh, goes, we haven't heard of any cat. Understood. Thanks. That's good to hear. Uh, also, one more point on the tax rates. I mean, they seem abnormally high. If you could explain why we are seeing such a high tax rate. Uh, actually, you know, we GIC has got tax credit in the books. If you have seen, 814 right. crores is there last year. So we have still not opted for the reduced tax rate. 
we till we complete no we will finish our tax uh, mat credit into that i think next year onwards we will opt for the reduced tax rate it's by 24 you mean no 23 26? Okay, so this year itself, uh, FY23 should be reduced. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and so what is the tax rate guidance that we can take for FY23, ma'am? Twenty-two percent. Twenty-two percent plus uh, almost all those uh, additional. Additional. So around twenty-five percent because this year on the PBT it is closer to forty forty-five percent, right? Uh. Yes, because certain uh, certain ex- certain incomes uh, or certain expenses are kind of a disallowances, etc. Correct. So that is why it's appearing to be like that. But going forward, it will be around uh, you know after uh, 22 percent of tax rate, it will be much lesser. Nearly what we are showing now, supposing the similar uh, PBT comes, right. it will be nearly 8 to 10 percent lesser than what presently is. Okay, ma'am. So assuming that we make a PBT of say 3,500 crores, you are saying instead of the 1,550 crores tax, it will be 10% lower in terms of the amount yes. or more than that. The reason being, it is 1,800 crores is uh, 1,800 crores is our tax, and then there is a 200 crores credit due to previous year's provision. This is what the breakup of that tax is. Okay, so 1,800 basically will come down to roughly whatever. One third will go down basically. So. 22 percent will be the rates plus uh, surcharge, whatever surcharge will be there. Mm-hmm. So that will be payable next year onwards. Okay. Correct. So, onwards, basically. So correct. So then, on 3,500 crores of PBT, that translates to close to only 900 crores of tax payout, right? If, if my yes, yes. correct. Plus, even even during this year, if you see the balance rate, there is 800 crore match credit was there. So we will not be paying this all 1,800 crore. Correct. We will be making correct. payments of only 1,000 crore. So that 800 okay. crore is existed against uh, the total tax payments, and now its net balance is zero in the current year. Understood. Thanks. Uh, my final few questions on the investment portfolio. So, given the current interest rate scenario where interest rates are going up globally, how have we positioned our debt portfolio? One, and do we expect any mark-to-market hits on the debt portfolio? Uh. As it is your second question, whether we will be doing mark to market for debt, uh, no, our accounting policy doesn't. Only consider. HTM, ma'am. Only HTM, uh, okay. so that is uh, ruled out. Uh, hmm. About the debt investments, uh, mostly IRDA guidelines uh, give us a broad, you know, uh, roadmap. Roadmap, how should we invest? Correct. Right. So in that case, we have to have a minimum 30% in government securities and 15% in housing and infra. So these are our guidelines where how we invest. So those will continue. Uh, uh, going forward, uh, our corporation will definitely think of uh, more in the government securities because interest rates are increased there. The yields are increased right. in government securities. So that of course the allocation will be uh, marginally more. Uh, and uh, we are always secured the kind of investor investors or triple A. The rating uh, parameter remains same. So the picture will be slightly uh, skewed towards the government securities next year, till next year, kind of two to three percent more or let's say five percent more allocation to government securities. Understood, ma'am. And what would be the modified duration of the portfolio broadly, the debt portfolio? It is in the range of uh, five to six years, I suppose. Yeah. Five to six years. Yeah. Modified duration. Got it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, ma'am, how the investment book breakup that we shared between policyholders and shareholders? So, could you explain how this is done? Like, is there some ratio that we apply, or how does the accounting for that work? Uh, actually, yes, you are right. It is always a ratio which we apply to our total investment book. Investments okay. per se are done at a total level. Uh, as per our accounting policy, we work out the policyholders' fund, which includes our IBNR. Unexpired risk reserve and uh, premium deficiency reserve, and also shareholders funds with the share capital and free reserve. So this ratio in the current year it has it uh, it is approximately 75 to 25 percent. So our investment book is uh, like you know shareholders funds and policyholders funds is uh, based on this this uh, bifurcation. Exception is of course foreign investments which we take it to our uh, shareholders funds. Uh, these are few exceptions which are small number. 
actually got it so broadly 75 25 is the correct correct yes. okay and any equity allocation increase or decrease you know view points given what is happening in the markets currently uh we are trying to like like you know limit our in- equity investments uh, up to 20% or less than 20% of the total investments that is our first fundamental principle right now amongst that uh, whenever market goes down substantially or with a with our parametric uh, the indication we take yeah. the advantage of market going down to buy good uh, blue chip and nifty 50 stocks when the yeah. market goes up of course we uh, realize the profit uh, out of those so based on the market movement we uh, purchases and sales are done yes this year since the market was down in the fourth quarter we made a good purchases and up to third quarter there was a kind of a small purchase yeah. but still our uh, equity is less than 20% even this year it's in it's uh, about 18% now with 18% allocation currently okay so with all of this ma'am what do you expect the investment income to kind of look like i mean are we going to be able to retain this investment income that you know we've been generating uh, that we have generated last year or do you see any risk over there interest income definitely will be persistently in, uh, rec- um, we will definitely able to make it because our investment strategies are like that as it is a profit on sale of investment it depends on the market condition but we will definitely try to endeavor it to be at this level if not little more marginally more than this got it and sorry my final question is on uh, the alternate capital which had you know like really driven down the reinsurance prices or was preventing a hardening since quite some time so given all the challenges in the market are we seeing that alternate capital has started moving out of this space i think it is uh, most of the capital is uh, kind of locked because of the earlier events and there was a kind of reassessment uh, from the this capital deployers at the same time this uh, inflation and hardening of rates will be mm. a disincentive for them to deploy this side mm. but again given the vast pool the impact may not be so very significant i think it is something to watch out for understood understood Okay thank you so much team uh, that was it from my side and all the best thanks thank you mr agarwal thank you participants if you wish to ask a question kindly press star 1 on your touchstone phone please press star 1 to ask a question the next question is from the line of avinash singh from mk global kindly proceed yeah hi good afternoon a uh, couple of questions uh, first on uh, particularly on the life insurance side i mean in over the scheme of things you have been uh, uh, literally a guarded player in the life insurance market and particularly a uh, large uh, part of life insurance exposure remains in india but uh, in that context uh, the timing of growth particularly Uh, in the last two years perhaps what i would say this time that that of course you reflect in your uh, uh, life underwriting design now what kind of uh, pricing changes you have pricing or term changes you have seen in the life insurance of uh, for the renewals uh, happening now your treasury year so that's the first question and second is more to again do with a bit of quarterly numbers so the 1241 crore profit commission that is uh, going into your claims cost i mean if uh, am i right if i say that okay, the 50% claims ratio for the quarter if i were to adjust for this 1241 i mean uh, broadly uh, takes to 64 uh, i mean so that's my uh, question that is my understanding correct and even if that i mean 64% a kind of a claims ratio looks too low i mean for a retail business with a diversified portfolio yes, that to uh, you know uh, with a kind of a some quota share and certain profit sharing so uh, what has gone uh, uh, so uh, so much into your favor to bring uh, down uh, the claims ratio this quarter or has i mean are you satisfied with your reasoning so two questions so first on the life uh, reissues and the second one on this uh, claims ratio for this quarter thank you right, uh, thank you mr singh mr singh i'll first take the life question of yours first so uh, see life portfolio for a reinsurer brings in stability and the diversification that it seeks now in our case our life portfolio is still very small 
it's just about two three percent of our total book. Yet yes, because of COVID, there have been heavy losses in reported in the live portfolio. It have also again then immediately led to a price correction as well. So the payback that we are expecting in the live portfolio would be about two three years. So in any case, the growth is always cautious and never uh, very uh, swift, so to say. So we will grow that book over a period of time and cautiously at that, and we can show that we get a risk return that is commensurate. I mean, a price risk return which is good and satisfies our appetite. So that is the uh, strategy for life going forward. Now uh, about the other two parts that you asked about. First is about that. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, you asked about the amount, the pop, the profit commission. So I'll request Jeshi Ma'am to come in there, and then for the losses, I'll just request the appointed actuary to just put in a few words there. This profit commission uh, is uh, actually out of the out of the funds which we withhold on behalf of the reinsurance. As I explained in the earlier question also, out of the reinsurance premium, we have a contract called structured solution wherein insurers are protecting us up to a particular level and after a particular level, etc. So some pro proportion of that uh, premium is retained into this account as funds with it, actually. <laughs> From there, uh, when the contract gets over or completed, then all the outstanding losses are reduced. The final balance is arrived at, and this final balance is considered as profit commission in the account, in the account for the year. Now this account profit commission is netted out from the net commission which we see in the final uh, balance sheet. So this is where it is. It is 1,241 crores which is a one-time kind of an adjustment to the account. So uh, this is adjusted in commission or tails? Because if it is adjusted in commission then I mean uh, because uh, I mean the commission cost is still is uh, pretty uh, normal for this quarter. So that is where I was uh, uh, getting a bit confused that okay, I mean, because the commission uh, cost uh, is like around 2000 crores, so that roughly translates to close to 19.5% even after this uh, 1200. So that's what I wanted to know okay, is your net this profit commission of 1241 adjusted from the commission cost or it's going into the uh, your claims cost? Yes, uh, actually, this profit commission was adjusted in our third quarter. If you see our third quarter results, this was adjusted in the third okay. quarter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very clear. Yeah. Right. And yes. So now coming to the fifty percent claims ratio, that looks. I mean, uh, I know. I mean, in the ratios, uh, it's more the annual number that should be looked rather than quarter. But yet, I mean, for the fifty percent claims ratio, it looks exorbitantly low. So I mean, it is giving some impression that uh, either uh, the Q3 uh, IBNR results were too prudent, or there is some kind of you know aggressive assumption gone into Q4. So can you just help uh, us understand that what is uh, sort of for which lines have led to this kind of a, a strong, uh, you know, uh, reduction in claims ratio? And I mean, from where have you sort of uh, released the reserves or uh, reduced the IBNR? Yeah. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Singh. Uh, see, I'm Satish Bhatt, appointed actuary. Uh, see, uh, when you see this uh, quarter-wise uh, loss ratios for a uh, general insurance, uh, sorry, sorry, a reinsurance company, uh, you have to understand that the dynamics are slightly different. See, what happens for a direct insurance company is that they keep on getting their premiums every day as well as they keep on getting their claims every day. So it is it is more of a, uh, a smoother transition from one quarter to another quarter. But in case of a reinsurer, what happens is that our, our quarterly statements, we call it a statement of account, SOAs, those arrive on a quarterly basis. That too with a one quarter delay. Uh, so what happens is any you if you see the GIC's uh, loss ratios for the last uh, maybe uh, five or six or ten years or so it would have remained in the range some somewhere around uh, it would have hovered around 90 90 percentage even if you see the last year's uh, loss ratio that is 92 point something which has come to about 93 point uh, something for this this quarter that would have remained there but in quarter wise if you see those will definitely vary because. Uh, based on the booking. Uh, it's not because we are releasing IPNR or we are adding IPNR. It is because basically what happens is that we estimate the claims uh, and the claims arrived at a later time may be slightly different from what the estimation is done. So if you see the December uh, loss ratio along with the 50% that you see here, uh, 
for the quarter ended December, that 31st, 12, 2021 was 121%. So that means uh, that is the dynamics of the business. So if you take the average of these two, uh, that will come to about 80, 80, 80 odd uh, percentage or so. So it is, uh, so uh, what the, the point to be noted is that for a reinsurance company like GIC, uh, the quarterly there is going to be there will be volatility. There was volatility, and there will be volatility because on uh, based on the receipt of the statement of accounts as well as uh, booking of these numbers into our system. Then uh, to your question, specific question on which classes of the, uh, businesses contributed. See, uh, agriculture for for the underwriting year 2021 was good. Something we got after almost uh, four years or so we have been incurring losses on uh, the PMFY or the agriculture uh, portfolio this has been better for uh, this year uh, similarly our fire portfolio has been consistently performing well domestic fire uh, has been consistently performing well uh, only uh, like uh, only uh, portfolio that is giving us loss is uh, the foreign fire that is that also not because of the business that we write and because of the catastrophic claims uh, that we happen to see and uh, those have uh, considerably increased over the last uh, three four years so uh, what i would say is that the numbers are comparable uh, if you should take it on a yearly basis but the numbers are likely to be volatile if you take it on a quarterly basis i hope i have answered your question yeah, thank you, sir. So now again, uh, if I can ask uh, some follow-ups. Uh, so you're right. Uh, so that's where I started saying that, okay, it's better to look at year-on-year. Year. Now, even if I look at year-on-year, year, the fact to be considered here is that FY22 has been one of the most challenging years. And particularly for us, I, I was a multi-line reinsurer like you, that where you had a lot of losses in life. In, of course, in, in normal because of the uh, COVID and also on the health side. Yet you match uh, previous year PNCs. There seems to be something which is cutting of course. And now related to that, on uh, crop you say that okay you had a uh, you know a better experience. But uh, if I am not wrong, uh, Ravi would be booked particularly in uh, your uh, uh, Q4 numbers. Now in Ravi also towards the end of the harvest season, because of the abnormal uh, temperature or heat, there have been meaningful heat, yield losses, particularly in the wheat. Now, are you comfortable with the uh, reserves that you will be holding in crop because uh, the Ravi uh, just gone by will be settled over coming months? So, uh, are you comfortable with your reserve, particularly in the crop? Because yes, crop underwriting looks normally uh, too good. Uh, I mean, I would say uh, too good. Too. So that's uh, the thing. So uh, that's my question. That because year on year you match. Uh, kind of or rather a better or uh, kept like flimsies of like even when there was so much of losses in the health and uh, you know life and are you comfortable with your uh, crop pro, uh, reserve right now because uh, crop particularly uh, wheat uh, has seen a loss of yield towards the end of the quarter uh, sir again uh, coming to the same point uh, one is that you no know, uh, since the uh, June 2020, uh, there have been a lot of efforts that GIC has been taking to reduce the uh, underwriting uh, loss ratio. So that has actually, uh, if you if you see the, if you just bifurcate these GIC's numbers into life and non-life, the non-life numbers, because of all the effort by the management, it has actually improved by about 3 to 4 percentage. Uh, but Yeah, yeah, sorry, I think uh, there was an interruption. So, uh, but uh, even though the uh, life, life portfolio is quite small, that has given about a 200 odd percentage of loss ratio. Uh, so whatever reduction or whatever improvement we have seen in the loss ratio in the non-life side uh, has been uh, washed away by the life loss ratio. So what we expect is that uh, going forward, the life loss ratios or maybe in the three to four quarters, in the next three to four quarters, we should come to back to uh, the 2020 level or so. Uh, but uh, maybe there could be another uh, one or two percentage improvement uh, we expect to be to come in the non-life loss ratio. So uh, there should be a considerable improvement. So this is not uh, something magic because we have been all working together to reduce the loss ratios, pruning the uh, 
uh, treaties and uh, looking at performance of the treaties and doing a lot of efforts. So those have gone food. Then your next question on agri. Uh, what I told is the agri underwriting year 2021. So the year which completed on 31st March 2021. Uh, so that is almost uh, uh, done now. So there we are seeing a good uh, improvement, but we have uh, adequate reserves kept for this 2022, the, the current Rabi as well as uh, current uh, Kharif season, uh, we are adequately reserved. So those, those are yet to maybe it may take another one year uh, for the whole uh, losses to run out. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, kindly press star one. We request participants to kindly press star one to ask a question. You may press star one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for your time today afternoon. As is fairly evident, we have been working on a set strategy, and that has started to uh, show the trend lines that we are on the right track, possibly. And we will continue this strategy, trying to give a much healthier portfolio to uh, the corporation so that we are into a long-term sustainable business. And that is what the endeavor shall always be. Thanks again for your time in the afternoon today. Goodbye and good luck. Thank you. On behalf of General Insurance Corporation of India, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.